Canvas for a Cause is um, one of the co-sponsors of the Anti-Drone Days of Action. Um, my partner that works with me, um, Gabe, um, is, has been actively working on this campaign for several years now. So it's kind of his like spearheading thing. Um, <clears throat> I myself am really interested in that. You know, drones is something I've only more recently become aware of, I've become aware of how many different types there are. So it's not just like this one type that's in the sky, you know, there's the ones that are over us for surveillance reasons, border security, all that sort of thing. And for me, I really want to, why I'm really interested is to bring awareness to the idea that this isn't something that just happens outside of here. This is happening and going to be happening in a lot more crazy ways in the next coming years. Every Thursday, there is a kind of like awareness rally event um, outside of General Atomics up in Escondido, and it's led by the group Veterans for Peace. Um, they pretty much, you know, hold signs and try and get the crossing traffic to see what goes on there. Things like bombs are dropping while you're shopping, things like that. And uh, the most recent thing in international news about drones is that it was approved that the president or the executive didn't have to give any reasoning or explain why there were any extraneous murders in what's supposed to be a targeted drone strike, which means that it's supposed to go towards someone that they label as, you know, a terrorist, something like this, but oftentimes has citizen casualties, and um, they're saying that they don't have to explain that even if they are American citizens. A couple months back, um, Medea Benjamin, who is the founder of Code Pink, a large anti-war group of a lot of women around the world um, came to speak about her most recent passion, which is trying to stop the drone strikes in Pakistan. Um, being that this is kind of the way that our country wages war these days is they minimize ground soldiers and are increasing unmanned vehicles like these drones. Um, it's become a pretty scary thing. There's like kill lists that have been approved by you know our government as totally legal and they don't have to give justifications even if American citizens are killed with them. Um, and the majority of these drones um, are made here in San Diego by a company called General Atomics. It's up in Escondido area um, with their headquarters in La Jolla. And uh, so a couple years back, some people wanted to do some actions on this and it didn't turn out how they want. But uh, since Medea came into town, um, we've been working with them and they've secured quite a bit of funding. Um, so it's gonna looking like a weekend in early April. Um, the call to action is already out to a bunch of anti-drone and anti-war groups across the country. So we're hoping to mobilize some people from elsewhere into San Diego, which is always exciting because it seems like a lot of times people are mobilizing people in San Diego to go elsewhere for these demonstrations. But uh, the goal is to have you know a couple educational and informational events as well as um, you know maybe some CD and definitely some rallies and uh, maybe even a cross-border action. I was a pretty active participant in Occupy San Diego and I um, actively believe that the information that was put out by WikiLeaks which is accused to be done by Bradley Manning um, is the reason that the wave of revolutions in Northern Africa began to go off, um, which then led to the occupations across San Diego, uh, I'm sorry, across the United States. Um, and so Bradley Manning, you know, was in the military and he's working with information and he sees all these awful intelligence details. And what he does is he says, I think that everyone has the right to know what's going on so that they can make an informed decision for themselves. And if they don't have this information, how are they supposed to accurately judge and how do we call this a democracy? Um, which I totally believe in, you know, went out WikiLeaks, there's all the crazy stuff going on with that. Um, but he has since been in protective custody, um, you know, held in different private prisons and uh, different fort prisons, so like military prisons. Um, hasn't really had much access for people to see him and there was recently a case talking about um, how he was definitely not treated well and was punished and um, you know they're doing things like torture tactics on him and it's been proven that that was happening but all that he gets for that is you know something like a month off of his sentence or something and so this whole trial is going on in secret 
in secret. No one's allowed to be introduced to it. And the details of why he supposedly released this information, which is, like I said, that he believed people needed to know what was going on. He believed in a rich history of what is called whistleblowing, which is, you know, blowing the whistle on things like war crimes. And um, unfortunately, he's being punished for it, and a lot of people don't even know who he is. Um, and specifically within Canvas for a Cause, one of the reasons why we're so interested is that some of the chat logs released between him and his friends show not only was he gay, but that he actually may be questioning his gender identity. Um, we're a very strong trans rights group, so one of the things we're trying to do through this is have teach-ins on about his gender. And uh, so that's why I generally try to refer to them as Private Manning, not Bradley Manning. Um, I don't want to refer to them as another name that has been seen because I don't know if he wants the whole world to refer to them as that or if they were just telling that to their friend who's the only person they were able to talk to. But the whole idea of him being an LGBT hero is something that we really pride ourselves on at Canvas for a Cause and we always um, bring information and signs about him during our pride celebrations. If we believe in safe spaces for queer youth worldwide, not just here in San Diego, but internationally, then we need to have spaces that are free from war, spaces that are free from, you know, surveillance, spaces that are free from, spaces where you can actually have safe and easy access to medications like HIV AIDS medication, um, spaces where you can freely express yourself regardless of if you're in a government or military institution, the list goes on and on and on. So how we really connect and tie all of these things is by focusing on the overall idea of international solidarity struggles and the idea that if there is to be anything like a safe space for queer youth or queer people in general, then there needs to be a safe space for every other struggle, which includes race, which includes you know feminism, which includes anti-war, which includes um, you know going against free trade agreements that actually anti-immigration things, so we really want to like be widespread because we really think that if we put ourselves into a corner about only one thing, then we're ignoring everything else that's going on around us. Um, but in all of those different struggles, in all of those different things that we work on, we always, always, always identify as queer. San Diego is a really interesting place. Um, it's one of the biggest places where I feel like on the surface is just totally overrun by materialistic, military, uh, kind of fun in the sun tourism, right? Um, and it took me a while, but once you scratch the surface, you really do find a vibrant community of people who care about a lot of different issues. And uh, for me, it's just been a long process of developing and wanting to create a place where there's community accountability and we can learn to turn to each other and rely on each other rather than institutions that are obviously failing us. And uh, working on all these things together and bringing in the queer voice, making people have to think about LGBT rights when, at an event where they thought they were never going to have to hear about that is exactly what I think we're trying to do and what we want to do is making sure that we can connect all of these and not have to hide our identity in any of the struggles that we want to be a part of.